right, Treacle? Right then, let's get into some Power of the Primes, or as all the cool kids are calling it, Potopa, which pretty much seems like one big generation's victory lap. Like an epic encore greatest hits medley of all the best bits of Combiner Wars and Titans Return, plus every single possible scrapper G1 that's left to revive, with like a gaggle of digivolving leader figures, a parliament of 87, 88 backbenchers, an absolute girlwind of long neglected fembots, and a pantheon of pocket sized pretender primes cast as teeny tiny headmasters with no face, and the Dinobots. And also, apparently, one completely left field Legends duo combiner. So watch me while I gravitate toward a rare chance to prattle crap about Battle Trap. But first, let's rewind for a second with a swift sniff at the original Battle Trap, who's something of a notorious late G1 lame ward and one of only two ever duo cons, which is a transformer that has a single robot mode that splits into two vehicles, which sounds cool, but you know, life is pain. Because look, he just goes boom like this and that's it. That's what he does. So he's really not very good, but he is quite cool. Like the helicopter's cute, and the van's kind of fun with its simplistic design and hot pink windscreen. And the robot mode's definitely got something, man, even without any real arms. Just the colours and the cool head and the mix of alt mode bits, like some kind of vehicular centaur. But much as I always liked him, I definitely couldn't see him ever coming back. I mean, I totally thought this would be one of those guys we'd just leave behind in the 80s, but I was wrong. Double wrong. Because in 2015, the Botcom boys brought back Battle Trap as this triumphant triple change in troublemaker. <sighs> Try saying that three times fast. I was so psyched when this thing came out, man. Because Battle Trap was back. That dweeby little nobody that I was sort of fond of had returned from the void as a hench Voyager class bruiser based on freaking Generation Springer, one of the dopest Transformers of the decade. Alt modes are on point, the heli chest is perfect. He's got the optional back rotor in his signature double gun, and they even expanded his character a bit. What's that? His alt modes rejected each other, so they had to make him a triple changer to save his brain. Brilliant. But annoyingly, I couldn't get hold of one for like two and a half years, and when I finally did, it turned out the helicopter mode wouldn't work because his back panel's all squiffed, and the very first time I transformed it, his head fell off. Oh, fun pub. I'll thump you up. But just the sheer unlikelihood that we'd ever see this character again was kind of enough for it to still be a treat. And with that, I was dead ass certain that that was a wrap on Battle Trap. But I was wrong. Triple wrong. Or is it still double? Or is it more now? I was wrong as shit. Which brings us back to the present day and Power of the Primes, which recently dropped an all new incarnation of our favourite Chimericon absolutely out of the blue, with zero fanfare about six days after those in hand warehouse shots leaked with suspiciously good timing. You know, I'm actually a bit miffed it turned around so fast. I mean, I just got the Botcom one in December, and then suddenly an all new Generations one pops into existence before the novelty's even worn off. Plus, it meant that I dropped about £70 in the space of a month on one character and it was Battle Trap. Anyway, this newest addition to the Duocon dynasty comes as an unexpected 1-2 combo. This is Battle Slash and Road Trap, a pair of ideal timeline Deceptor siblings based on either half of Battle Trap and reworked into a fully separate character, and I love them. Let's begin then with this blue box van bloke. This is Road Trap. Check out this sublime small boy. He's like the perfect archetypal Decepticon road scout. Just a huggable little hench kid who is a robot that clearly is also a car. He's about as grounded as it gets, and I fully support his endeavours. So Road Trap in his own right is an all new dude with an all new tood, rocking an original if indistinct head sculpt. Like that red synth core visor is badass, but is that a mouth plate or is he just not got a mouth? Bond's got some hot tats and a sort of pointy nipple ripple going on. Arms are massively passable with a slight backways blockage, and the legs are somewhat stumpy and completely dominated by these neato feto. And that's kind of it. I mean, I don't really expect a lot of depth from a guy who's one half of an absolute nobody, and that's pretty much what you get. Nothing fancy, no layers to explore, just a disarmingly dumpy, straightforward sass master with 200% attitude. Absolute trap queen. <laughs> Transformation pretty much just involves unpacking those size 19s and then tucking everything else in behind them. And the van mode's, let's say, lovable. I mean, it's hardly the tidiest with the straight up visible combiner crotch and his roof all covered in robot tits. But he's a good fun little knockabout nincompoop. He's definitely got that same sort of scrappy, unambitious charm. Just a basic little box van in a gorgeous deep blue with the flatline headlights and the tow cable and that wicked raspberry windscreen, which I think might be my favourite bit of 80s Transformer design. I mean, is there anything more iconic? So yes, mildly mediocre as he may be, Power of the Prime's Road Trap totally holds his own as the 
perfect Generations update of Battle Traps Legs and Butt. Battle Slash, on the other hand, could hardly be accused of being the perfect anything. I mean, I love that he exists now as a technically all new G1 canon character, but he's just so bad. Like, he does work, nothing's floppy or busted. Chest plate's actually pretty sweet with a bit of original robo detail on there. Love the super serious silvery face, and I guess the overall off white is kind of oddly appealing, but he just looks so uncool. He's the wrong shape. Like, he's so weirdly wide with the flat frontage and giant birthing hips. And what's with these ankle flanks and the giant butt mounted crap catcher? Look, I don't want to clobber him too hard because he does seem like a fun fella, and if nothing else, I respect what he does with the blades. I do sort of like him, but it's a soft like. Almost a pity like. <laughs> Transformation's actually super swish. Like, it's surprisingly involved. Everything sort of splits open and swings around somewhere it shouldn't. Just a shame it ends up as the world's dumpiest dweeb copter. Just look at it, all uneven and knobbly. With the massive lump and front side and pathetic shriveled bum end. Cockpit's all tiny and squished up there and the rotor's got like zero clearance. It's like all the bits that are actually a helicopter are crammed into the top millimeter. And all the rest of this bulk's just dead weight. With this giant gormless gate gap at the front, like some mental mechanical birdo. To be completely fair, he's clearly sacrificed having any decent modes of his own for the good of the combiner. But dude, if I'd just bought Battle Slash on his own, you could call me an Albany ham. Steamed. Combining these two battle bros is pure Super Link smiles, man. You know, for all his faults, Battle Slash is actually crazy fun to transform, and this is clearly the job he was born for. And Road Trap just three quarter mitosis is into some angry trousers. And one awkward cloaca phase interface later, Generations Battle Trap is in full effect. Check out this smooth little sex face. He's just such a stunner with this hourglass figure and luxuriously limber rave ready joints. He is all hips. Heads a flawless little robo cube with a cheeky sky blue much in the signature silver shades. Like proper hater blockers there. Torso looks sickening with this full body deep V deceptor canopy and these sexy cerulean bod windows. Arms are good and chunky with these crustacean-y shoulder blobs and some ballsy ball joints. Not crazy about the wrist kibble and these awkward built-in thumb shivs and I feel like I would have preferred blue arms. But you know there is a lot they're trying to do and at least he's got arms. Bit more unfortunate extraness round the back there with poor old Battle Slash's little arms just hanging loose with nothing to do. I personally prefer the far away backpack realness, but I guess you could do like a Vishnu thing and flail them out all crazy. Anyway, between the obscene ab crunch and the fabulously fluid hips, he's definitely a bendy boy. Love these skinny thighs just poking out of all this leg baggage. With like arms and wheels and robo boobs hanging off him like he's slowly dropping his jorts. Pinks are popping with these fierce fuchsia foot straps. And he finally cashes the check that his G1 box art wrote 30 years ago by actually having two different feet. No way weapons to speak of, but you can probably pop a Prime Master in his paw? Maybe Metal Hawk for the colours, or Cloud Burst for the two barrels, or both? But it is a bit weird that there's no Prime Master integration at all. Like he doesn't do the head thing and the other Legends lads at least have somewhere to sit. But these guys are so wrapped up in the Duocon thing that they seem to forget to be big picture team players. And you know what? That's okay, because this could be it for the Battle Trap bloodline. I mean there's always going to be another Optimus Prime, another Jazz, another Grimlock. But with somebody like Battle Trap, you've got to treat every shot like it's the last. You gotta focus up and just get it right. And baby, this time, they crushed it. G1 is done. Predakin can eat it. Battle Trap is everything. I still can't quite believe this. An all new, full featured, basically deluxe sized Generations Battle Trap in my hand right now. And I'm not even dreaming. And I've got a tiramisu. This is fucking amazing. <laughs> Sure to subscribe for more Thew's Awesome Transformers reviews. Limited appeal, keeping it real.